Hey all, Lawrence from Express Unity here, and today we are going to be continuing our Idea to Steam tutorial series. Now, I decided to change this video up a little. I decided I want to try and change my editing t techniques to um, try and make it a little bit more entertaining, as well as contain as much information as I possibly can to help you guys learn. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is placing our placeholders for our buildings, ground, our trigger zone where the monsters are going to cross. Um, and we will also be uh, creating our players and a monster prefab and just doing a bit of scripting for the both of them um, to get ready for our next episode. So the first thing I end up doing is creating just the basic ground for our game. So the next thing I do is create a cube that will act as the trigger zone. And basically what will happen is whenever a monster crosses this trigger zone, it will end up randomly targeting a building and running towards it, destroying it. After making a few basic materials, I end up adding the building prefab. And these are again, just a primitive cube. And the next thing I end up doing is create the placeholder for our player. And I do this simply by adding a capsule and then I end up creating just a cube parented to that or as a child to that. Um, and that is just going to go in the direction that the player faces. So what I do now is just give the objects some tags so that we can script them uh, a little bit later on. And then I start working on the placeholder for the monster. So I simply do this just by creating a cube and then I create a smaller cube at the front of that. I then start messing around with the camera position and a few of its settings just to see what I like best. Um, I end up going with just basically the camera looking down at the map at an angle. I think that was going to be best for the game. Then I start working on just a placeholder for the axe, which is the main weapon for our character. And I do this simply by using two cubes. After creating the axe placeholder, I end up messing around with a few of the Unity packages. I end up installing the burst compiler because I never used it before and I thought it might end up speeding up the process of the compile time. So after I installed the burst compiler, I ended up creating a new script called player controller. And then I start messing around with a few different types of movement. My first one was very jittery and didn't really like it at all. I ended up trying to apply a fix to it, um, but it didn't quite work. Um, and then in the end, I just went for a more simpler solution. Um, and I ended up liking the feel of that movement the best. So here you can see me start working on the first movement type. Um, so basically what I do is I end up using the WASD keys to just apply a straight force to the rigid body velocity. I ended up messing up all the directions as you do. So in this bit, I'm just trying to figure out which way is what. Um, so I think I ended up making the a placeholder in the wrong axis, but that doesn't matter. I just compensated that by just switching around the code. I then start to realize that the movement that this script is making is kind of jittery and was really unpleasant to move around. Um, so after doing this, I proceed to try and fix it a little. I ended up trying to fix the problem by using get key up. Um, and then when the key was released, what would happen is that the velocity would get set back to zero. However, this ended up feeling worse than the original code. I ended up changing a few things around, um, using a few else ifs to try and fix the problem, but it kind of made things worse. It did fix the original problem, but then it gained more problems as you do in coding. Um, so in the end, I ended up just ditching this idea going for a more simpler solution. So what I do now is I get the vertical and horizontal, um, and then basically I just directly pass that into the velocity. Now I didn't realize it at this point, but I actually ended up swapping the vertical and horizontal around. So I go and fix that a bit later on. 
At this point, after fixing the axes, the controller starts to feel really nice. It's amazing what three lines of code can do compared to however many I had before, like 20. I now proceed to just add a few physics materials, uh, making it so there is no friction at all. And this helps with just the movement of the character controller. After getting some settings that I like with the character controller and I think it feels nice, I start working on the monster class. And this class is going to be inherited by all the monsters and it's basically just going to give um, all the monsters just a base functionality. And I end up using an abstract class so that we can edit this a bit further per monster so that we can give each one some kind of different behavior. So the three main settings of the monster that I decided will be the name, the speed and the health. Now what I do is just create the first monster uh, script to inherit from the monster class. And I call this script death bat. Um, just because we, one of the assets that we will purchase in the future is a bat, I believe. And so this is just going to be the script for that monster. Alrighty, well that does it for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my new method of editing. I sure enjoyed putting it together. Um, now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, also, we have a Discord server. So if you guys want any help or have any questions, please feel free to join it. We have plenty of friendly community members and I'll see you guys in the next video.